Hey everybody, it's Housewife Until Heaven here. This will be, um, I think, the tenth video in the series. And in this video, I want to specifically target um, the demonic spirit of Jezebel. I've said before that the narcissistic personality disorder, as well as the demonic spirit of Jezebel, are what I believe to be um, one in the same, and if not exactly one in the same, definitely working very closely intertwined with one another. Narcissistic personality disorder is a commonly used, widely known phrase, but the spirit of Jezebel is not nearly as known. So I would like to specifically speak about this spirit and things that you would need to look out for when dealing with individuals that sh uh, show these traits and characteristics, okay? Before I get into specific things that you would need to look out for and the ways that this spirit will operate through individuals, I would like to read a passage of scripture that is extremely imperative that we listen to and then heed the warning. It's an absolutely serious scriptural passage and it's, it's, we, we, we can't just ignore it. I mean, it's something that we have to greatly um, pay attention to and act accordingly. So Revelation chapter 2 verse 18, beginning in verse 18. To the church in Thyatira, to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write. These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you even did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. That's a really important word right there, unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely, unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds." That is, that is absolutely frightening. You know, uh, the fact that this, this letter was to a specific church in church history, but the fact that it's in the book of Revelation, which is the unveiling, the revealing of what is yet to come, lets us know that it's, it wasn't just a warning to the church at that time. It transcends all of history. And this is just as much a serious warning to um, churches today and to individuals in churches today. So when it says you tolerate that woman Jezebel, what that means is... Um, you are allowing this spirit that works through individuals that have allowed themselves to be controlled by this spirit. They, they're being allowed to operate in churches, okay? They also operate, I mean, everywhere, okay? This, this spirit is everywhere, but... What I'm specifically wanting to mention is the Jezebel spirit and how it can even work in a church setting. You know, you would think 
man, uh, it isn't church where this person should go if they're, you know, if they're dealing with the demonic spirit? Isn't that the best place for them? Um, they view church as a prime hunting ground because again, like it said, I know your, your deeds, uh, your love and your faith in me. You have love for one another, uh, your service that you do in your community and with one another and your perseverance, uh, you're doing more now than you even did before. So these are good people. These are good churches, you know, they've, they've got love. They have faith. They, they, um, are very instrumental in their service, in their communities or in their families. They have perseverance, all awesome, awesome qualities, but yet they have allowed or tolerated the demonic spirit of Jezebel to infiltrate their churches and they are not, they're not dealing with it. They're not confronting it. They're allowing individuals that are demonized by this to, to operate, to um, be extremely deceptive and destructive behind the scenes. And that is, that is why there was such a stern warning. Because when this spirit is in a church, specifically, or a ministry, it is going to wreak havoc. It does not want that church to survive, to thrive. It is going to do all it can to destroy that church. I need to plug in my phone because my battery is dying. Hold on one second. Okay. So the spirit of Jezebel is the number one reason for strife in relationships, divorce, and church splits. I have heard of churches that have allowed this spirit to operate and they have just been, they've had to close their doors. I mean, the destruction that happens behind the scenes um, is, is really, really bad. And that is why there's such a stern warning to this specific church. Look, you've got to deal with this. You cannot allow this spirit, these individuals to operate in your midst because they are, they are not there for the right reasons. They are there to manipulate, control, and ultimately steal, kill, and destroy. Okay. That's what the Jezebel spirit does because it's, it's satanic and that that's what Satan does, you know, the great adversary. So how does it steal? from from those that it is targeting well it steals peace joy and confidence you know <laughs> how does it kill sickness and accidents crazy random accidents you know when i started this series last week the week before last you know i i knew well the enemy isn't going to like this and so, you know, you just kind of got to be ready to, to battle in the spiritual realm. And after I had posted the first few videos, we were out as a family coat shopping and one of our daughters ended up falling at a department store and cracked the back of her skull open. And we ended up in the ER with her to have her head stapled back together so just an absolute freak accident and that's kind of part and parcel to what um i have dealt with um for years because yes i have i have dealt with an individual that is controlled by this demonic spirit and crazy accidents have taken place okay so it, uh, it's going to steal your peace, joy, confidence. It's going to kill you with sickness and crazy accidents. And it's going to destroy you with depression and fear. 
If the enemy can take your peace and he replaces it with fear, that is a really, really depressive place to be. And uh, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, it just depletes you. Uh, it shuts down, you know, your, your giftings, your callings. You can't operate in your gifts and your callings if you are constantly in fear and depressed and anxious and, you know, all of those things. And, and that is what the Jezebel spirit is targeting. Okay, it wants to shut down those things. So if you are a targeted individual by somebody who has this spirit, then those are things that you're going to need to look out for because they are very real. Okay, the Jezebel spirit and those that it controls seeks to control others, influence them, and dominate, especially men. The Jezebel spirit is gender neutral, so it can, again, it can, it, it, it can operate in men and women. So I'm going to specifically speak about women uh, that are under the control of the Jezebel spirit and what they will do, um, especially in the church setting, ministries, relationships, that is so damaging. And we've, you've got to understand what you're dealing with here. So it will try to dominate men. It has an unnatural sense of self-importance. This person will require excessive admiration and attention. And in the era of social media and selfies and self, 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 it's all self-serving. I mean, that, again, is such a valuable tool for them because they can present themselves as one way when in reality they are a very different person and individual. But they are going to really require an excessive need of admiration and attention. They will falsely accuse men of God and they desire to destroy them. Very true. She lacks self-control and is unable to control emotional outbursts. Very true. Especially when you confront one. And the gig is up. She is manipulative and takes advantage of others to achieve her goals. Uh, like I said, prime hunting ground. The church in Theotira, I mean, they have love. They have faith. They are instrumental in service to, to other ministries, and they persevere. Those are the things that the Jezebel is going to want to hi, um, get into and manipulate and control to take advantage of these people and their their true natural desire to be empathetic and good good followers of the Lord. She is jealous and envious of anyone who is a threat to her. I experienced that quite a bit in my dealing with Tabitha. Uh, the the jealousy, the envy, it's it's a whole nother level, okay? It's extremely obsessive. And, you know, unfortunately, they're, when they are that jealous and envious of somebody that they deem a threat, they're going to do all they can to tear that person down, okay? Especially if they're in the competitive mindset, they're going to try to outdo you, one-up you in every area of your life. She is defensive when confronted about her own sin and rebellion. Remember what he said. Oops, sorry. Remember what he said. <clears throat> I gave her time to repent. I gave her space to repent. But she was unwilling. The people that are controlled by this spirit are not truly repentant or remorseful. It does not matter what their words say. It doesn't matter how much they cry and uh, lament over what they've done and they're just so sorry. It is all a facade, the fruit, the, the, the proof 
of whether or not that is true or not will come after the words are spoken. And you've got to pay very close attention to the fruit that is produced even after the words are spoken. She is void of any genuine empathy, but will falsely mimic empathy to, to, to seduce and control her victims. Uh, that is extremely important um, because these people are not empathetic. They are devoid of empathy, sympathy, feelings, um, how they hurt others. They, they are void of it, okay? They are completely false <laughs> when they try to present themselves as being empathetic or caring. It is not true. It is in an effort to seduce and control victims. Okay, so you have to know that. So if they're in a church setting and they're there and they are raising their arms and they're singing out or they're praying or, you know, they're, they want prayer from somebody You've got to be extremely careful and cautious because it is a false, uh, it's a false perception, it is a false reality, it is not who they really are, but they are doing that because they want to seduce and control and manipulate other people to be on their side, basically. Uh, that's why it's so important when it talks about the, the number one cause for church splits. Because if you've got, let's say, a couple that are in a church and one of them is a, a narcissistic Jezebel and the other one is the, the true victim, the narcissistic Jezebel is going to cater to everybody else. They will speak to everybody who will lend them an ear because these are truly empathetic and caring people. They will say all sorts of lies, falsehoods. They are going to do all they can again to present themselves as the victim, the poor me routine, and the church. You're going to have so many that are going to side with the Jezebel, okay? And they are going to turn against the true victim, that is why church, again, that is why there's such a warning because this spirit is so destructive and it will split churches if it is allowed to continue to operate. It will drive ministries into the ground, okay? And the fallout is significant. And lastly, she has a sense of entitlement and demands automatic compliance with her expectations. They present themselves one way, Raising arms, praising the Lord, praying, all of that. And yet, if you try to um, confront them, and it doesn't even have to be a confrontation in a negative sense. It can just be, you know, you want to go to them in, in humility, but you want to let them know, hey, look, there's some things going on that I need to speak with you about, incredibly hurtful things. That is when you're going to see the true nature of the Jezebel, okay? Uh, it's not going to be the, the, you know, empathetic, kind, caring, broken, wounded, uh, woe is me. It's not going to be that facade. It is going to be very um, confrontational very defensive, very angry, and that's what's going to happen, okay? So these are things that the Lord is warning churches about, individuals about, because you cannot allow this spirit to infiltrate your, your church, your ministry, your relationship, your home, because it is going to do everything it can to steal, kill, and destroy, you know, those that it targets and those that are in the web. So um, I'll come back with another video to talk more about this. But very serious warning um, to the church at Thyatira. And again, it would behoove all of us to listen very 
carefully to that warning and to warn others because those who truly have empathy and sympathy and do care and are followers of Christ don't want to see the ramifications happen in individuals' lives that have allowed this to go on because it's not good. So I'll come back with the next video in just a minute.